Well, let's go from the West Bank to Lebanon now on the programme to get a sense of what impact the truce may have there. Rawad Taha is our correspondent in Beirut. He joins me live now. Rawad, there have been regular skirmishes on the Israeli-Lebanese border since October the 7th. Is there any sense now that they might stop during this truce? Yes, in fact, there is uh, there is a sense that during the truth, uh, the truth, this truce could be extended to uh, southern uh, Lebanon as well. Uh, sources close to Hezbollah have noted both to Lebanese uh, media outlets and also regional uh, TV channels that uh, Hezbollah has been uh, supporting Hamas in Gaza since October 7, and it's not a front on its own, and that anything that happens in uh, Gaza in the field in terms of military operations and in terms of intensity is reflected uh, on the border between southern Lebanon and Israel. And thus Hezbollah explicitly has hinted that uh, they could be stopping military operations uh, targeting uh, Israeli military positions uh, along the border uh, with Lebanon. However, one thing to keep uh, in mind is that the same source has also confirmed that this is subject to the fact that uh, Israel does not launch any uh, preemptive uh, uh, airstrikes or uh, or drone strikes, uh, as we've seen over the past few days, uh, targeting Hezbollah bases or targeting civilians. So uh, Hezbollah is ready to stop firing at Israeli bases during uh, the truce uh, in Gaza. Uh, the other side of the story is in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, of course. One thing to keep in mind as well is the fact that the Israeli uh, foreign minister has officially sent out a letter to the UN Security Council asking for the implementation of the 1701 uh, UN resolution, which in fact ended the 2006 uh, war between uh, Israel and Hezbollah. Uh, that resolution in particular says that uh, a, a big portion or a big uh, chunk of southern Lebanon is uh, a demilitarized zone where uh, no uh, presence of uh, weaponry besides the Lebanese army is there. Uh, so if this is the case from the Israeli side, we really need need to look at the developments. But in fact, Hezbollah did mention that they're ready to stop the military operations over the next few days. And Rawad, also today, the Iranian foreign minister is visiting Lebanon. What do you think the significance of that visit, visit is at this particular time? Um, of course, uh, the Iranian foreign minister, Hussein Amir Abdelrahian, landed in Beirut a few hours ago. Uh, he also met with the secretary general of Hezbollah, uh, Hassan Nasrallah. Uh, on the schedule as well are meetings with the Palestinian, uh, Palestinian officials from uh, uh, the organizations in Lebanon, in particular, uh, most probably as usual, uh, Hamas and the Islamic Jihad as well. Um, as he landed in the airport, uh, Hussein Amir Abdelhayan mentioned two things in particular. Uh, the first, that he's here to meet uh, Lebanese uh, officials. Uh, so state officials, uh, uh, and he's working on maintaining uh, regional uh, stability. That was the first part of his message. However, the second part of his message was that uh, the resistance, uh, according to his words, meaning uh, Hezbollah and the affiliated uh, Iranian proxies, are uh, still ready uh, to fight if the aggression continues uh, in Gaza. So. We're looking at two messages sent out there, that we're here to stabilize the region, but then if things could go back uh, into, uh, into the wrong uh, turn in Gaza, this could also possibly uh, refuel the Lebanese uh, arena as well. All right, Rawad Taha talking to us there live from Beirut, Lebanon. Thanks very much.